I wanted to do something a bit different for today's video and I'm focused on nonprofit management and leadership. Now I've worked with a lot of amazing managers, but I've also worked with some really, really bad ones. Before we begin, however, I want to give you some love for being a great leader. You are here on YouTube searching for how to be better. Now, if you're here because you are struggling with a leader who is toxic or incompetent, we've got you covered too. And normally I present my tips and tricks in my videos based on my professional experience. I've been a fundraiser and nonprofit marketer for 25 years, but today's topic actually required I do a bit of research. So our sources are my old CFRE review materials, Nonprofit Risk Management Center, Mission Box, Stack Hands, and Nonprofit Quarterly. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, do all that kind of stuff because it helps recommend our channel to maybe those managers who should be on here searching how to be better. And my plan for today is to share tips on how to be a better leader, but also tips for dealing with damaging leadership. So let's get started. Now let's start by defining management and leadership. So the words management and leadership are often used interchangeably, but they're really two different things. Managing means supervising team members and holding them accountable. A manager has the formal authority to oversee the day-to-day -day operations, um, but a leadership in contrast is more of an art. True leaders create the vision for the organization and strategically involve everyone in making it a reality. Few nonprofits can thrive or even survive without strong leadership. And sadly, the nonprofit sector is not immune from the harm that destructive leaders leave in their wake. So let's talk about the qualities of a good nonprofit leader. Good leaders have a clear sense of the organization's mission, the constituency it serves, and how that mission relates to the constituency. Additionally, they have a good understanding of the activities of the organization and how these activities relate back to that mission and the constituency. Some attributes of good nonprofit leaders include that they are problem solvers, they're self-starters, and they practice good judgment. They understand that resources are limited and they stay innovative and creative looking for new ways to do things. They back up their knowledge with experience and they attract people with their passion and their spirit. They listen and they work to understand what motivates their team. They are self-aware, they have empathy, are honest and integrity, but most important, they get out of the way and trust their team. So what are some qualities of a negative nonprofit leader? Well, destructive leadership can come in a variety of forms, such as toxic, abusive, or bullying. But they can also take a laissez-faire approach to running the team, or in contrast, they run with an iron fist and need complete control over everything. They can be bullies, emotionally volatile, negative, or passive aggressive. They can lack integrity, empathy, honesty. They can be basically nasty people. They fail to give proper recognition or gratitude, they must win at all costs, or they can claim credit that they don't deserve, make excuses, or pass the buck. They can cling to the past and halt any kind of innovation. They may play favorites, but most importantly, they do not listen. Now, good leadership also sets the tone for your philanthropic culture. A culture of philanthropy means that everyone in the organization embraces a donor-centered environment. Everyone understands that charity and fundraising are crucial to organizational health and that everyone has a role in the process. A good organizational culture improves employee morale and productivity. It motivates and inspires employees, increases employee retention rates, and supports the team to do the best job they can for your organization. Your team are ambassadors for your organization, so you can see how a negative culture would negatively affect not only the team but your fundraising as a result. So what does a good nonprofit culture look like? Actually a better question is what does a good culture feel like? Each volunteer and every employee feels it and clients and donors recognize it. Everyone in the organization embraces not just the clients you serve and the programs you provide but the mission as a whole. If your team is beaten down how can they be ambassadors? A good culture means that everyone from the receptionist to the senior managers love what they do and are proud to do it for your agency. A negative culture can look toxic. Most employees attribute cultural dysfunction to the characteristics of a toxic leader, which we talked about before. There's also exhaustion. Many nonprofit staff 
have people who are overworked and underpaid and wellness should be a sincere goal by promoting and supporting physical and mental health. There's also absenteeism and low productivity. According to Stackhouse, unhappy employees take 15 more sick days each year than the average worker and are 10% less productive. There's also costly turnover. 75% of people voluntarily leaving an organization aren't quitting their jobs, they're quitting their bosses. There's also increased workplace conflict and tension. There could be gossip, backstabbing, unfriendly competition and criticism. If you're a good leader and want to be better, besides being a great role model, the number one tip I consistently came across was listening to your employees. Care about what they have to say. Be open to their ideas, their feedback, and their questions. You can also conduct anonymous surveys with staff and longtime volunteers, and surveys provide a chance for the individual to reflect on the qualities of leadership and supervision they received, but also the degree to which their talents were used and whether they witnessed or experienced any harassment discrimination or other forms of destructive leadership. You can also resolve to improve employee engagement. So whether that's through special outings to celebrate personal or team wins or giving your employees insider information such as big changes that are coming down or directions the board is going to take. By engaging your team you make them feel like they're part of the mission. And finally, continue your education. Searching on YouTube how to be a better leader is a great start. Keep being open-minded and willing. If you are self-aware and have an honest desire to do better, you are already a great leader. Now, if you're struggling with a bad leader, and this is just my opinion, it's not meant to be instructive, but I had to decide whether to stay or whether to go. And in deciding to leave, it was the beginning of a great journey for me. But if I was gonna stay, there's a couple of things that I found that were, would be helpful. And that's making sure you're really dealing with a bad boss. Is there a reason for their behavior? Are you being too hard on them? Maybe try to understand where they're coming from. You can also try to have a conversation with them and civilly explain what you need in terms of direction, feedback, or support. If talking to them doesn't work, consider going to their manager or their boss. Um, proceed with caution though, I was in this position and I had to structure that conversation very carefully. Instead of complaining, I asked for advice from RED on how to deal with the situation. But also don't get drawn in or gossip. Identify any triggers and don't let it affect your work. Um, keep detailed records as well. You can also act as a leader. When dealing with people that are incompetent or nasty, just do what a leader would do. And finally, and most importantly, set boundaries. Do not let them get away with abusive behavior. As soon as there is a private moment after the conflict has de-escalated, draw their attention to it, clarify to them that you are not okay with this and not comfortable with it. A good nonprofit leader makes or breaks a charitable organization. Good nonprofit leadership is about that leadership, vision, and resources. So I hope you found value in this video. If so, thumbs up, leave us a comment, and thank you so much. See you next week and have a wonderful day.